Hello. Ready for a color theory class? It's going to be so much fun. I love color mixing. We came up with this idea yesterday. Um, we're only using these three golden colors. Benzamidazidone yellow medium, phthalo blue, green shade. There's a red shade and green shade. I like the green shade better. You can use either. And quinacridone magenta for our red. So I've got my palette pad right here. Get some assorted brushes, a little thing of water, and a surface to paint on. So let me make sure. Okay. So what we're gonna do, and this is gonna be really fun, we're gonna paint a little cityscape, but we're gonna practice mixing all these colors. So for the background color, we need to make a nice stormy blue. I'll leave that where you can sort of see it. These three colors plus titanium white are all the colors you need to paint every single color in this painting. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a good time, people. Would you like it full screen? Sure. So let's put some of all three out on your palette. And if you don't have a palette pad, you can also use a glass plate or just a piece of glass. I would tape off the edges so it's not super sharp. Or you and use paper. Wax paper works. Um, magazines actually work if you don't have wax paper. But anyway, I am not, I have been a huge fan of golden acrylics since I discovered them. I used to paint with oils and then somebody at Pearl Paint in New York told me that this paint company was made by artists. Okay, is it, will you check on your phone and see if it's clear? You're not using this brush. I just brought it over for fun. My kid wanted to eat. Look at this amazing, huge, huge brush. They're by um, Dynasty. They're, it's called the Blue Ice Collection and they hold so much paint. I did a short with them the other day. Okay, so can you see all the colors? So to make the stormy blue, let's start with some blue. This phthalo blue goes a really long way. Put some yellow, and some red, and some white. Okay, so mine's crazy bright. I don't want it to be, we're gonna make, mix up a decent amount because it's our background color. Keep adding in red and yellow until it tones it down a bit. May I have some paint, please? Oh yeah, sorry. Thank you. Okay, so your stormy blue, you know, just like a stormy day. It's a grayish blue. See, so mine's still looking too sunny. So I'm gonna add a little more red, a little more yellow. So if you, if you used all three of these colors in equal portions, it would make a perfect, a neutral. It would be like a, just a gray. So the way you mix colors is varying the, por the proportion, the portions, is it the prep portions or the portions? Or is it either one? Um, varying the- Proportions for this, I think. Varying the amounts. You know, I'm not sure I know. Okay, so once you have like a stormy, darkish blue, then I want you to, you got your paint out there, kiddo? Yes, ma'am. Then just paint your, just paint a rectangle or a square I don't know what what size space you have to work with. Can mine go further over here? I don't want to go off camera. Paint it and paint it pretty thin so it'll dry so we can get right to work. And I like I like not being a perfectionist around the edges and then framing it and showing the kind of hand done feel. All right, Zelsa, so you got your stormy blue? No, I just put all the paint down. Okay, sorry, I'm rushing you. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and just so you know, when you're painting a scene, an outdoor scene, up here, this part, the higher it is, the sky is closer to you. So it's actually further away when you get closer to the horizon. So it's more neutral down here and lighter and brighter towards the top.
So I'm gonna make it a little lighter up here, I guess what I'm trying to say. You're making a stormy blue. So anyway, basically just make a big rectangle, but you don't have to do the paint all the way to the bottom unless you want to, which I do. So this is my entire scene, but make it really thin so it'll, I mean not, you know, spread it out so it'll dry quickly. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix a bunch of colors and paint buildings. Does that, do you need to see that? Hmm. It's hard to see everything during the stormy gray is like a whack. Okay, no, that blue looks great. And don't be too particular about your stormy blue because it's a background color. Hmm. Okay. Now, what happens if your paint dries too fast? Um, you might just use too. You can dip it in a little bit of water just to get the rest off your. If this, she's asking if this paint over here dries up, you can always dip in a little bit of water and. Wow, Cover that your really space. Works. Good. So get your, you know, general background. It does not have to be perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix. I would get a smaller brush than you were using. I'm going to use about this size. And it can be any brush. But what we're going to do is we're going to call out a thing. Like, um, we'll start with... Letting Zell finish doing her background. It's okay, don't worry, me. I'll catch up. You right there? Yeah, my hand cramped from all the exercise of painting. <laughs> Since we have all this blue, let's start with some green. You don't have to use this paint. You can start from the beginning. Let's mix with every color that we mix during this class. Just for this exercise, I want you to use at least some of each of these three colors. So always use all three colors. Now, it might be just a tiny speck of red and way more blue and yellow, but just as long as there's a little bit of all three colors. Never paint straight out of the tube. That is a rule for me personally, but if you, when you know when you go to like kindergarten and their artwork is way too bright to hang in your house, it's because the hues are too pure. They are too energized, they're too much and it's almost exhausting to look at. So you wanna have sort of toned down colors. And that's how you achieve it, if they're always a little bit toned down. Like, even if you look at a fabric in your house that has red in it, if you walk up to it and hold like an actual pure hue, you know, red item, it's not red. It's gonna be a toned down version. So we're gonna start with grass green. Let's mix, take some yellow. Touch, touch, touch. This blue goes a long way. And a touch of the red. Mix some grass green. So mine's, so when you look at this color, so mine is a little too lime green. So what does it need more of? Cause it's really yellow. I think it needs more blue. And just keep noticing when you add, it's like, it's like cooking. Just keep adding. You should also make a color wheel over to the side with, with each color. All right, but I don't have, it's hard to get on here because, so anyway, you're going for making a grass green. If it gets too blue, you might want to add some more yellow. If it's too bright, you want to tone it down, add a little more red. <sighs> and when I say red, I'm referring to the magenta. What are you getting frustrated with over there? I'm completely out of paint, so I tried to make more paint, but now it doesn't match, so I got to make a bunch No, more. it's fine. Just paint from there up. Okay, once you get grass green, so every time we mix a color, then we're gonna make a little building out of it. 
Just pick a spot in this city scheme and just do. I know it looks kind of boring right now. Don't worry about it. Just make, it's gonna be sort of an abstract, but you're gonna like it in the end. You think you're gonna always remember? Never lay a paint soaked brush down. You think you're gonna park it and come back to it? Never even sit it down, keep it in your hand. Never, if you make the habit of never laying it down, then you're never gonna have this, wherever it is, situation that it, this brush is toast. This was an expensive brush. I'm sorry. Thank you for apologizing. But that's what happens and you think you're gonna remember and you don't because you get lost in the moment. Sorry for being so strict, but. <laughs> and while we've got this green, let's make another, um, let's make lime green, like 70s lime green. So look at it, what do you need more of? More yellow, it needs to be even a little more neutral, so I'm gonna put a little more red in there. You know, like that kind of, like kind of pea green is what I'm going for. What? Oh. No, like, not TT, like a, like a vegetable. <laughs> Don't say that on your YouTube channel. Wait, am I gonna get, am I gonna get censored? Is that what I'm gonna happen? No, oh, they're gonna stop watching. <laughs> Please don't stop watching because I said I misunderstood. So see how the green's just slightly different than the grass green we did. So once you get a, a green that you like, then come over here and do another building. And you can make it a different shape if you want it. Just remember, notice in this picture, the buildings look smaller in the background. So they're gonna be bigger in the foreground. What's the first color we're making? We made grass green and then we're doing kind of a pea green. Okay. Perfect. So it doesn't matter if the color, Every time you make a different color, make a building out of it, which was gonna make for a fun project by the end. But I just want you to notice what happens because every time you mix colors, you learn more about how they work. True. So this is just, don't be too strict or hard on yourself. Okay, Zell, what's the next green we can do? We're gonna make um, a forest green next. Okay, so you might wanna do, we're gonna do forest green, like a deep dark green. Which so you might wanna color. put- Wait, no, that's emerald. I don't know. Um, it's sort of a natural, everybody's seen a dark green leaf. Dark That's what we're going leaf. for. So you want it to be darker, so you might start with blue again. Because I had too much white over here. And then some yellow. Oh, nice. And if it's too navy, add a little more yellow. And if it looks too emeraldy, put some red to tone it down, to give it sort of a nature color. And just keep playing with it until you feel like you've hit nature green, dark green leaf. Mm. And it, it takes practice. Like mine's kind of a little emeraldy. So if it's too bright, you want to tone it down more. So you put the opposite of green, which is red. And if it's too blue, put a little more yellow. And then put a building somewhere, somewhere random. I'm gonna put it down here and mm. make it a front building. I feel, hmm. how are you gonna make it a front building? Cause like, how are you gonna paint behind them? I feel like the front buildings have to be done last. You know, when I painted this painting, I didn't, I just would kind of make them look like they were behind it. Oh. It is easier to do the smaller, my daughter just made a very good point. It is easier to do the smaller buildings first in the background. That's what I'm thinking too. That okay. way. Okay, do that. So that's why I'm thinking, what if we jumped around from color to color instead of doing a thing of greens? Well, I kind of wanted to not waste paint and keep That's doing greens. Okay. These are these are conversations we should have had before we began class. But we got so excited yesterday about the color mixing class. We can we can jump around some. Okay, after you've done, see, mine is not really a leafy green. That's more emerald. Let's do a dusty gray tennis court green. Ooh. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna add some white. Do you think that's tennis court green? Mm, it's a little too blue. Okay. You mean like too bright or too? Too blue, just too cool. It's you think it's wider. a little yellower? Yeah. Okay, so if it feels too cool and temperature is relative. 
So temperature depends on what it is right next to. But, so like, what is, Zell, what is warmer, red or blue? Red. Red. And then, but you could have a warm green and a cool green right next to each other. Okay, does that look like tennis court green? That's seafoam. I feel like, well, let me, what does a tennis court look like? I'm no. actually not sure. Okay, I think it's tennis court green. I think it's a little more toned down. You know, like the clay quartz is what I was thinking. I feel like it's greener. Okay. Will well, you make so... yours greener? Oh. So make your... Power on. Oh, hello. So make your smaller buildings in the back. And if you really like a color, you can do more than one building. <laughs> I didn't realize the ones in the back need to be smaller. That's smart. Were you not listening when we just went over that? I was painting my background. Um, <laughs> she wasn't listening. Well, I think it's important to reiterate throughout this, so I'm gonna keep asking questions. Okay, new all right. People join. Smaller buildings are in the back, mm -hmm. but don't be have fun with them. Let's let's make this a surreal painting. Okay, so you're right. We've done a couple of greens. How'd that feel? Felt good. Woo! Oh, I think Morgan's watching. Hi, Morgan. If you want to change up your building size, you can get a smaller brush. That's what I'm going to do. Whenever you're done with a brush, put it off to the side. Okay, I'm going to tear this off just so y'all can, because I only have a small mixing area. Just so y'all can watch. Next, let's do this. And I like to try to use the old paint, but if you feel like starting over every time, just so your brain, you know, is learned. If you're a beginning color mixer, I like to not waste paint. Um, let's do, let's make um, paper bag brown. You know what I mean? Like a, everybody knows what a paper bag color looks like, right? That's a hard one, right? So I'm gonna start with white. Especially if you have to use all three colors. It's really sort of a toned down orange. So I'm gonna put some yellow, some of our magenta, and the tiniest dot of blue. I mean, this blue, y'all will see, goes a long way. And just try, I mean, don't, you know. Ah. Took me a long time to. I think I made my building too big. That's okay, make a big chunky building. It could be, mm. you know, a big building. So I don't have enough color, it's too much white. Now it's getting too red, so I'm gonna add more yellow. And then what I like to do is, if I'm trying to make a neutral, instead of adding in more pure red or pure yellow, I, I mix in like... Something, other color you already yeah, mix? that has both of those in it. That's like cheating the system. Okay, and you don't waste as much paint. Yeah. So I'm gonna take, so you're saying you could also yeah, pull do, the green, because that's the like green adding and with your, yeah. blue and yellow. Okay, so that made mine turn totally green. Well. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay, don't listen to me then. <laughs> I know, it's actually, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But anytime you sit there and look at a color, you can, see, this is a hard one to make. Y'all are doing great. Keep thinking about like what paper brown looks like. So to me, this looks too green. So anytime something looks too green, you add its opposite, red, and that will tone it down. I wish we had a piece of brown paper bag. <gasps> Bet I do somewhere that we can test it on. <gasps> so it's kind of yellow. It's definitely a neutral. All right, we're getting there. Does that look almost paper rag to you? Okay, to me, it's looking a little too yellow. The opposite of yellow is purple. So that means a little blue and a little red. But remember, that blue is powerful. Hmm, okay. Check out mine. I'm almost getting there. Okay, and if you add a little white, I think that's ex you're right on track. Okay. Okay, let me show Zell's. Don't put that brush down, don't you? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> She was thinking about it, I saw her. There's Zell's, looks pretty good. If she adds white to that, will you add some white on camera so they can see? Okay. 
That is looking like a brown paper bag to me. Let's go get a paper bag. I'm gonna grab a paper bag and let you Dang. literally test it. Mine is too. I like yours so much better. Oh, see, I feel like mine's too gray. Isn't it interesting how? No, I like how you got that. That I did repeated too many. But are you learning how color works as you're mixing? Because that's the point. Mm -hmm. I guess. I think you are. I'm pretty sure you are. Now, when you're learning color mixing, some paint is going to get wasted. That is just the way it is. Let me find a brown paper bag. This is pretty close. Yeah. So, mine's a little too green. I need to make it redder. No, I don't know what to do with this thing. Oh. What I'm saying is, brown paper bag is probably one of the hardest colors. And y'all did great. And I might add a little more white just to make it pop from my land from my landscape. Okay, next we're gonna do a fun color. Next we're gonna do and it's a little bit macabre. Let's mix the color of blood. What do you think, Sal? Fresh or dried? <laughs> Good question. Um, let's do fresh. So, we're gonna have Halloween early. Put some red down, mix in some yellow. And remember, we use all three colors. So just a dot of the blue. Oh, I used way too much. Try to get a deep red. And so you can see, like if it's too bright, you need to add the other two colors. If it's too pink, you need more yellow, that kind of thing. I need to get more paint. Okay, I needed some more yellow. Also, I like to mix my colors before I add white. White will really highlight it and make it so you can tell how well you mixed it, but also you can't get rid of the, it's hard to get rid of the white if you put too much. Okay, how do you feel? Does that look like blood to you? No. I think, I do think that... What does mine need? Blood red is like, um, kind of tube, kind of... No, it's not at all. You don't think? Mm-mm. Oh. I'm gonna get there, watch. I love. Okay, I put too much blue. So now, it's purple blood. This is it's purple alien blood. So, that, that's another thing that's wonderful about art. The rules are, there are no rules. So... Unless you're here. <laughs> unless you're my child. So... I'm gonna put that weird purple down. Do a little building back here too. And I'm gonna try again on blood. I need another paintbrush. All right, I'm gonna show you all the cityscape one more time just because you can't see it the whole time. This painting is actually really fun. I did it a long time ago. I don't know if you can see. So every color you mix, you can add you can add a little white and you can change, you know, you can change it up. I'm still trying to make red, blood red. So right now I'm starting with just red and yellow and zero white and a dot of blue. Because remember, we're trying to use all three colors. Look at this, though. This is pretty close. Look at that. Uh, I'm sorry. Check it out. I gotta do this real quick. Oh, it's still wet. Ooh, very nice. Okay, now let's do, um, what's an orange color everybody knows? Clementine orange. Let's do Clementine orange. That's gonna be kind of a bright building. Okay, then let's do... We'll mix the Clementine orange and then we can tone it down for your building. So I just put a bunch of yellow in I wish I knew all my sports team's colors, but I don't. Clemson orange? Is that a thing? Yeah, that's... I don't want anybody... To, we, we just like sports. We're not partial to any team. Except Please for, don't unsubscribe. <laughs> except for Chapel Hill. Go Hughes. We're a little biased towards that because we are from North Carolina. But Zell was born on Duke campus. So don't tell your grandmother. But I like Duke. So make an orange.
yellow magenta with a, just a dot of blue to keep it from being looking like a crayon color. I think I'm just gonna keep mixing on top of colors for each new one. Okay, I really like how your piece is turning out. Thanks. Can I show the yeah. folks in him? This is what Zell's got going on so far. And see all of these beautiful neutrals were made from these three colors. This is why I love golden acrylics so much. And your palette might, you might find that your palette is sort of on the bright side. And what you can do, now after you make your clementine orange, I want you to keep adding blue and watch what it does to it. Watch how it tones it down. And then keep going until you get a nice peach. Oh, and then you might surprise yourself. Like I just made this, I don't even know what you would call this. Just a nice Ooh. orangey kind of tan. I'm gonna make a building out of that. And make some wide buildings, make some. But I think in our minds, we get attached to overly bright colors. Yeah. When we're little. And we don't appreciate the beautiful neutrals as much. True. So, okay. if you want your palette to look more sophisticated, practice mixing and do a whole painting with just neutrals. Like, your painting looks so cool and none of those colors are very bright or high energy. Like, my orange is glaring a little bit. So, if you have something in a painting, this is a side note, if you feel like... Oh, but you don't get paint on your arm because then you can get it on the painting. Okay, but... If you mess it up, dress it up. Make that into a little highlight on the building or something. Well, you can also with acrylic just lick your finger and it comes off. Okay, but don't in, don't ingest True, any don't art ingest. supplies unless they say they are edible, which they are not. But anyway, what I was saying is, if you have a like this to me looks a little too bright, this orange. So you can do one of two things. You can either dilute it by putting more orange in because then less of your mm. attention goes to it, or you can just mix toned down color and go right over it. Acrylics are very forgiving that way. So I'm gonna make a little more subtle orange. Okay. Are y'all enjoying the color mixing assignment? Comment down below. Okay, next, you know what, let's do, do I wanna do some pinks? Yeah. Let's make some, let's do some very pale neutrals. You know what, let's take all the colors we've mixed and add and tint them, which means just adding white and watch how they'll change. So like- Oh, it's so hard to not paint um, just jewel tones cause it's so fun. It really is. But then if you hang that painting in your living room, it's gonna be a little bit like, add some white to your blood color and you'll find out how interesting it, mine was actually kind of purple. And then make a little building. I feel like I need a metal scraper so I wait less paint to mix. You know? Well, you mean a palette knife? A palette knife. I have a palette knife. Would you like to use a palette knife? Would it waste less paint? Is that the point of it? You know, I think that's one of the points. Add white, add a little white to every color you've mixed and just see all the variations you can get. I'm even gonna add it to my paper bag brown, which really was not paper bag brown. But you can make all these amazing khakis. Oh, I know what we're gonna do next. Let's do grays. Yeah, I just made a good gray purple. Okay, so this is the one I wanna do for the grays. Everybody make a neutral, try to do equal parts. Gotta make a new little spot. Try to do equal parts of all three. Try to make a perfect neutral, which means it's gonna look like black. So mix that first. So I'm using all three now, I can already tell it's too yellow. So, if it's too yellow, you add its opposite, which is purple, which means the other two. I wonder 
why we don't say bless you for hiccups. I know. I wish there was something to say. Should we invent something? I I feel like like if some somebody medieval people definitely said something. You did? I don't think so. I think we were the first. So then after you mix all three equal parts so it looks like black, add some white and look at all look at the cool gray you can make. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love it. Love these paints. Oh. So exciting. So put yourself a little gray building out there. But look how beautiful it looks when you put it next to the other colors. The neutrals are are overlooked sometimes. But think about it, like if you get a beautiful, um, you know, woven rug from Persia, it's going to mostly be neutral colors. And then the jewel tones will be will pop because they're not overdone. If you have a if you had a rug that was made of pure red, pure yellow, you know, primary colors, it would look like McDonald's and you couldn't stay there very long. It has so much True. energy. It's like, it, you know how when you see something bright red and blue in your periphery and it'll flash? Neutrals don't do that. True. So let's find, the, let's find the joy of our neutrals. Okay, now here's the fun thing to make some different grays. Add a teensy bit more red into your, you know, your neutral in the middle. And I'm using red and magenta interchangeably because our primaries are red, blue, and yellow. And you know what? You're right, Zell. I'm going to do the color wheel. And then put it over to the side and add a little white to see. Look at the different gray we got. It's really looking kind of purple. But I like it. So it's kind of purple, so let's add more yellow. And look at that cool neutral. But muddy colors don't let the light through. They're not luminous like these grays. Oh, that's really pretty. You know who really understands the value of the beautiful neutrals? It's Pharaoh and Ball Paint Company. I love what they do. So keep playing with your neutrals. You don't know Pharaoh and Ball? Like our dining room is Pharaoh and Ball. Can I borrow this brush, that medium one, the black one left? left yeah uh, yes okay i know all of you know this but we're gonna go over the basic color wheel because it'll help get it firmly lodged in your noggin which will make color mixing a lot easier hmm, i feel like i have too many neutrals i like how yours is fun and colorful this is what mine looks like right now okay well then make some brighter colors and you do that by adding less of the opposites. So you know what I mean? You make it more uh, more out of balance towards the primaries. Although while I have my neutrals out, I feel like I should use them. Yeah, make some buildings. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little color wheel over here. We have our primary colors. Is it showing up? It will. Oh, it's a little delay, interesting. Yeah. So we've got yellow, and while I'm not using this brush, I'm holding it because I'm not allowed to set it down. Why, Zell? because then they will dry and you'll forget about it. So the primaries, yellow, what are they, Zell? Yellow, red, blue. Okay, so here is our primary color wheel, yellow, red, and blue. So the secondary colors are, are going to be in between. So green. what would be in between blue and red? Purple. So if you mix these two, it makes purple. And then look what's directly across from purple. Yellow. That's its complement, which also means it's opposite. Okay, now what color is between yellow and red? Orange. Had a curl. And, and it irritates me that this is not considered part of like core curriculum, it, it just bugs me. Okay. <laughs> What is between blue and yellow? Orange. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? Yeah. Green. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I just failed as a parent. <sighs> okay. Green. Thank you, Zell. Welcome. Is, so these are the secondary colors. Green, orange, and purple. So the opposite of green is red. The opposite of blue 
is orange. That is there. And then you can have tertiary colors, which would be like a tertiary. red purple or a blue purple or a more orange red and so on. And it's infinite. But if you mix the three primaries in the center, you get the perfect neutral in the middle when you have all three mixed. So basically the color wheel goes and if you you'd fill it in where it got more and more neutral towards the middle. Does that make sense? So to tone it down, you go towards the center, which means adding its oh. complement. And then if you change the, the hue is when you're rotating in a circle around the color wheel. Okay, that was really, really well explained. So whenever something is too orange, you add its opposite. You look across the wheel and there's blue. If something's too red, you add its opposite, green. And it's the reason that red and green, they have like a, a an interaction where they flash pretty much. When color, when opposites are right next to each other, it's it's got like some push pull. Mm. I think color is fascinating. I do too. Um okay. Let's see, we've made some orange, we've made some greens, we've made some reds. Let's do, let's do turquoise. Ooh. Turquoise, very, it's a very yellowy kind of blue. And I feel like there are, are shades of turquoise, but. Let's do turquoise, the stone turquoise. I have other shades of that too. Oh. So basically start with blue and yellow, just a touch of the red, and then add a lot of white. Turquoise, so I need to ask you a serious question. Yes, ma'am. What's your favorite color? Um, it changes a lot. Yeah. It's been purple for the past three years, and I'm starting to move back into orange. Orange? I know, I know. But I think orange just to wear, but probably purple overall. But I, I do I do like that shade of blue. Yeah. <clears throat> What's your favorite color? Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for reading my mind. Um, that's a hard question for me. Purple when I was little. And then periwinkle when I first met you. And then it was, you. it was periwinkle when you first met me <laughs> at the hospital. Um, when you were born, it was periwinkle. And then it moved to turquoise, and right now it's between lilac, turquoise, and navy blue. And mm. I, I just, I go back and forth. I'm with you. I like, I like to wear navy. True. And I like navy in my house, but I like to look at lilac a lot. But mine has never, and I hate to say this because I hate to have such strong feelings about any color, but it's never been yellow. A lot of people hate on yellow. Did you know that? That was a common thing. Is it? Mm -hmm. I feel so bad yeah, because it's important. No, I'm not. I'm not saying like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> cancel culture. I, I, I mean, I love yellow because we need yellow. But a lot of people think yellow is annoying. Is that how you feel? Well, you know, I do think there is a lot of energy. There's yeah, like, people think it's like too high energy and annoying. <laughs> like, look at the sun. You know what I mean? I think everybody loves green because green's everywhere. True. Green right? And green goes with everything. It's, you know, nature. Yeah. And yellow is kind of intense. But I think it's also amazing how, like, think about your relationship with color when you're little. How important it is. Yeah, true. You know, like, I've got to have my favorite color, whatever it is. And it drives me crazy. I think your generation is getting so much better at assigning gender to, to pink. That drove me crazy. But that seems like that's been making progress. But also, I think talking about color with little kids is a great way to get them to get in touch with their feelings. Because if you think about it, there's so many associations with color. Like mad, like red hot mad. Yeah. Green, green with, with envy. envy. Or you're feeling blue when you're sad. Mm -hmm. Or you're you seem like you're in a sunny mood that means you're sort of yellow okay and so if you have little kids at home ask them when they're in a mood ask them what color their mood is and give them a vocabulary to talk about color because then you could say well what color was your teacher today at school 
and sort of feel, and then understand that they're separate. It can blend together and it kind of gives them a vocabulary about feelings. Mm. Okay, so what color do you think we should do now? We did some turquoise. I want to do some purples once I'm done with these. You want to do purples? I've just been making so many neutrals. Would y'all like to see? Okay, this is what Zell's got going on. I like them. Okay, well, get a clean brush and make some pastel -y colors. Okay. I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna use this navy and make a, oh. and use one of your dark neutrals and make a little building, it's always fun. So eventually, you'll keep mixing colors and bring it down all the way down to the front. And you'll have like a little city painting. I did these a lot more neutral. This is the photo, the painting ends here because it's on the wall as Zell's dad's. And um, this piece is actually, I like it. But like mine feels a little bright. I kind of want to meet in the middle where yours is. So I'm gonna add some white to that navy. And just make your buildings kind of stagger. They'll fill in. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna apologize to yellow, and I'm gonna mix some yellow. I'm gonna make some yellow. Okay, what are some? Lemon yellow. Okay, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna start off with <laughs> I mean, the heavens. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna start off with mayonnaise yellow. Let's see if that one, that one will be an interesting one to make. So all three colors. A little heavier on the yellow, just a smidge, and then a lot of white. Does that look like mayonnaise to you? I... You don't need a lot of mayonnaise, yes. do you? Now, that looks like a pretty boring color over here, but watch what it does when you put it against all these other colors you've made. Let's see. Ooh. You know what I mean? It's really... Okay, that building kind of snuck in front of the other one. I see what you're saying. I think Zell is exactly right that we should do the front, the back buildings first. But you know, I don't know if y'all could tell, but we're sort of doing this class as we go along. Does not mean there's not there's some great content here, but there is some element of winging it. Um, okay, so what other yellow could we do? What's another, what's another familiar yellow? Yield yellow. Oh, like highway sign yield yellow, okay. Yep, oh, got too red on me. Zell, it's just starting over over there. I don't know if I wanna have yield yellow in my painting. I don't either. I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. And it turned green. See how that happened? But even if you make an oopsie and mix a color, use it for one of your buildings. Now wait, what's, a, okay, how about this? Everybody make, see if you can make spicy mustard yellow. You know, like Goulden's, that kind of brown. It's right between green, but it's not really green because you'd be worried if your mustard turned green. So I'm gonna add a little yellow to keep it from, I mean a little red to keep it from being <laughs> green, but you don't want it to be orange either. So it's kind of like a yellow brown. All right, Zell, does this look like mustard or is that still green? If it's too green, add, yeah, add red. That's a little too green right now. Right, how about now? I would still be worried if my mustard was that shape. You wouldn't eat this mustard, is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's a little too green. I would be like, Ooh. No, that is looking like Golden's. I'm gonna add some white, and you'll see. Okay. That's mustardy. That's totally mustardy. Yeah, perfect. Okay, make, let's make some mustard buildings. Yeah. Does this make you miss New York? Totally. <laughs> All right, now I I'm gonna add some white. I'm gonna do a tint. It's okay to repeat the colors. Yeah, but now it's like just the pinks are jumping out. Let's see. 
Okay, and make some variation of your buildings, like make some tall, skinny ones. Oh, here's this. All right, so now think of some, think of some colors that we haven't mixed. Like, look around the room that you're in. Like, I just found this marker and it's kind of a purpley, like a taupe. Let's see if we can make a taupe color. So it's, that's a great way to practice. Just look around and try to match a color that you see in your environment. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, I promise. If you get frustrated, it's hard to make progress, but if you relax and have fun, then you get to where you kind of understand it and you'll be able to match any color. And if you're not dealing with the frustration of not being able to make the color you want, then painting is a lot more fun. These neutrals, gosh, I love them. But isn't it amazing that all these colors came from just using these three primaries and a tube of white. I'm gonna add some white. So every time you make a color, tint it, add some white and get a variation. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of cover up the blue. This is a very impressionistic city, but you see how the city's kind of coming together? And as the buildings get closer to you, they get bigger. So we, I'm gonna put Actually, my producer will put an email address, please, producer. Um, we'll put an email address in somewhere in the description because we would love it if you want to email us pictures of your setup, if you're painting, of your finished, your finished piece. I'd love to see that, um, see how it turned out, see all the different colors you could mix. And if you are enjoying this please subscribe because then we can do more classes I started teaching during the pandemic during the shutdown and we had so much fun but we're, we moved it over to YouTube because they let it they would cut us off I was doing it on Instagram and they would cut us off I don't know like Maybe it was an hour. In some of our classes, we had these group paintings. Some of them we would go for a couple of hours. It was very fun. But we went to YouTube because we can go longer and they're still free. It's interesting how different the colors look over here as they do when you put them on the painting, you know, next to the blue background, next to the other colors. Okay, I'm thinking, what color do I need? What do I need more of? I think I need more greens. We started with greens, but I don't think that, I don't think big cities have enough green buildings. I'm making that statement. I think cities would be vastly improved. I did see, oh, where did I, I read this article that this company is making a moss that that attaches to cement. So basically, there were these huge, you know, build like, not maybe not skyscrapers, but big office buildings that the moss was growing on the side. So they were basically, you know, green and making oxygen. And they looked so cool. Google that because it's, it's somewhere on the, in, on the internet. I know I saw it. That's a tall, look at that tall building. But it's just endless, all the colors you can make. Zell said she wanted to make some purples. I'm gonna make a little purple for her. It's a little too bright, I'm gonna put some yellow in it. 
Okay, so that color might look kind of yuck and muddy. Add some white to it. Look at what a pretty color that is. That almost looks like, do y'all know Peg Noir, the color Pharaoh and Balls paint color? It's one of my favorites. I love some lilac. Our little cityscape's coming together. So I hope y'all are having a nice time. Zell and I certainly are. Well, I think Zell is. So fun having my kid home. Hey, look at this one, Zell. Let's see. Wow. Oh, yours looks so good. So does yours. Yours is coming together. I see what you're saying. Yours is like a really... That's way too dark. I need to brighten it up. Well, much. it's like at sunset. It's really getting dark. Well, get in there and make some brighter colors. Yes, ma'am. Did you feel like, like, do you feel like you understand how mixing works? I more? guess. I think I'm more interested in learning about shading yesterday. Because that was really cool and mind-opening. Oh, yeah. We did a, um, a cupcake class together yesterday, so check it out. We have a couple, we have a lot of different, I don't know how many classes we have online. Well, understanding color actually helps you with shadows. So, you know the very famous impressionist who did the haystacks? I yes. always forget if it's Monet or Monet. I think, is it Monet? I know that Monet is an artist. Oh, that's good. I, but I'm not sure. I've never heard of Monet before. Okay, well, there's another impressionist named Monet. And, okay. um, okay, let's. Is it the same artist that did the lily pads or the water lilies? The one that did if the so, haystacks. Okay, I think that it's Monet, but we're gonna, we're gonna Google it, and I apologize if I'm spreading misinformation. But anyway, the artist that painted the haystacks, he painted. What are you doing? Several of the same exact haystacks, but all you could tell, we could tell what season it was, and it was because of the color. Oh. He was dear friends with a chemistry scientist who taught him about how the, so the shadow, the color undertone of a shadow is determined by the quality and the color of the light. So you know like in a cowboy painting of the desert, when, they, when you can just tell it's hot? Yeah. It's because the shadows are really blue, usually. Yeah. And that means that the, if the shadow is really blue, then the source of the light is really orange and really hot. In the winter, when it's a more of a yellow quality sun, then the shadows are a little more purple. But you could tell what season it was, even though it looked like the same haystack, you know, except for the one that had snow on it. That was a giveaway. <laughs> True. But color is just, I don't know, it's just super important. And... A lot of people just want to use black for a shadow and there's so much going on in shadows and depth and richness and if you understand how color works then you're gonna have an easier time making shadows what are you gonna name your town when it's finished I already dubbed funky town so <laughs> Dang. Um. <laughs> Gotta make a move. Danny, move. Wait, Wait, we might get demonetized. Don't sing too much. Oh, oh, they're gonna think we're this is a copyright infringement. They're gonna be like, who's saying who's saying that? Lips, lips ink or something? Oh my gosh, I just caught it that lips ink is lip sync. <gasps> I feel, like, I feel like you're making fun of me. I can't tell. Well, I've just never heard of that band before, but I, I mean, I, I didn't catch it. I no think I'm gonna make it. this building have stripes. I'm going, I'm going crazy. Ooh. Do you think? Do any buildings in New York have stripes? Some have windows. Oh. <laughs> Nancy B's Funky Town has stripes. I mean, I made them subtle. I feel like I need more blues. So also stop and, <clears throat> excuse me, now that you get, you're get you moving along and you've been mixing different colors, stop and sort of step back from your painting and, and ask it like, what color do you need? What color is missing? 
and it'll answer in your mind. Like, a, you know, you just kind of look at it like if it were a room or an outfit or yeah, an art project you were working on. Oh, wait, it is an art project you're working on. So true. Here's what I do at this point. Sometimes I get lazy and I start using the same color over and over and just, you know what I mean? So don't, slow down. Yeah, that's what Keep, I did. The variety, I think, is what's making these turn out so well. I hope people will email in pictures of their paintings because I love seeing what you guys do at home. Please send them in. Please send them in. And you know what? At the end, maybe at the end of the year, we'll make a compilation video of everybody's. That e that's what I did on Instagram. It was so much fun. I think Funky Town, I think I might be the mayor of Funky Town. Ooh. What do you think? I think so. She's the mayor. Oh, look at this building. A little bit of blue got in the edge. Look at that building. So. <gasps> mermaid. Yeah. She hates mermaids. Fun fact. Okay. I think hate is, I don't, I don't like to use the H word on anything. Okay. How do you feel about mermaids? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if I, they are real, A. <laughs> hey, let's, let's get that out of the way first. <laughs> we can no, I mean, they could be. I don't know. They could be. <laughs> I don't want to. I believe in, I believe in extraterrestrial life, big time. Even she just before. hates mermaid merch. I, I'm tired. I'm, yeah, thank you. I'm tired <laughs> of mermaid merch. That is, that's all it is. But you know what? You do you. I think everybody... I think people that do deep dives, I admire that. Because I like my rocks. I got my things I like, so I'm going to try not to judge. Sorry. I officially apologize to the mermaids <laughs> community. <laughs> I don't mean to say, I don't want to say I hate anything. Oh, yeah, you're getting bright. Y'all want to see an update on Zell's project? Yeah. Okay, you're putting, this is what's happening here. You're putting your elbow in paint. You know that, right? Yeah. That was from earlier. Was that intentional? No. Maybe it's snowing in Funky Town. What's the name of your village? New York City. There's already a New York. You have to come up with it. <laughs> Isn't it fun when you get, this is. I'm going to make some pretty purples. I know that some of you people out there have some obnoxious friends that brag about how much they meditate. And maybe that's you. I don't know. <laughs> but this is an active meditation. When you, when you, um, when you get absorbed and lose track of time, um, it's a, me it's an active meditation. It's just when you, when you get out of your head, when you're completely in an experience. So. Tomorrow, do you have one of those people at work? You could be like, I meditated for an hour yesterday. And it's a painting meditation. Or it'd probably be the more Zen Buddhist thing to not brag about it at all, but you know what I'm saying. Good job. I'm doing another stripey building. That just looks like windows. Gotta make a move. Now I have Funky Town stuck in my head. Okay, so we're almost finished here. Let's see how long has it been. Probably about time to wrap it up. I'm gonna try to finish. Do these up close buildings. Now don't rush, because I do that sometimes. I'll rush at the end of a painting, and you can tell. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna rush, I got you. But I really do appreciate you people watching and joining and painting and hopefully submitting images of what you painted. Alright, so we're almost done. 
your lighting looks cool in. Oh, thanks. Wait, we're almost done. I'm not. Okay, let's keep going. I kind of think mine's about finished, don't you? Yeah, I think I need to make less muddy colors. Okay, well, let me show, because actually it's really cool. Wow, there is a long delay. I love your town. What's the name of your town? You have to tell us. New York City. I'm sorry. <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, there's already a New York City. I don't know what to tell What's you. the name of this town? You have to give it an original name. It's a painting of New York City. I'm going to add in um, the Chrissy Chrysler building. I'm going to add in the Chrissy building. The entire state building. I'm Good. Add <laughs> the entire thing? Yeah, all of it. You love New York, don't you? Yes. What are you trying to sing? This is a new song. It's called Back on 74. Again, I think we're going to be in danger of copyright and <laughs> <doing it. laughs> Dang, I just keep making variations of the exact same purple. Okay. So, how could you... How, okay, working with that color, add in something else. Add in some yellow. Now it is a different color. Add some white to tint it. That's a cool color. Here, show the people at home. Let me hold it up. I love that. That's a nice, deep orange. That's what Zell just made. That's a cool color. Put it on your painting. Okay. Thanks. All right, we're about to wrap it up. Thank y'all for joining. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed color mixing. Please subscribe and come back and see us again. We're gonna do, keep doing more classes. Bye. Do you want to wave, Sal?